Hello, welcome back on my YouTube channel. In today's video I'm going to demonstrate how to delineate the contributing area of a reservoir lake. I'm going to demonstrate this for the area here in the map canvas and uh, I've downloaded the dam line uh, from OpenStreetMap using the quick OSM plugin. I've projected the dam line to UTM zone 32 north which is uh, the projection I'm going to use in this project. You can see that when I hover my mouse over the dam. Now I also need a digital elevation model. I'm going to use SRTM 30 meter and I use the Open Topography DM Downloader plugin uh, to download that. In another video I've demonstrated how to use this plugin. Let's first rearrange the layers in the layers panel so I can see the dam line on top of the elevation model. Now we see where it is and the DM that we have downloaded is in EPSG 4326 which means the geographic coordinate system. I need to convert this to the projection of our project. In order to make it square I'm going to zoom in a little bit and then I use export save as. I choose the output file name And I change the CRS to the one of the project. And very important, I choose here the map canvas extent, so it will be square. Therefore, we zoomed in before. And also important to make the pixels square and choose their 30 by 30 meters. You can leave the rest as is and click OK. And now we have a square copy in UTM of our DEM. Here we see it. For the rest of the analysis we're going to use the PC Raster Tools plugin. For that purpose it's important to convert our DEM to the PC Raster format. It's scalar data type and I choose the output file name. You can find more information about the PC Raster Tools plugin and how to install it in other videos. So here I have a copy of the DEM in the PC raster format. But our dam is still a line and I need to convert it to raster for a further analysis. I use the rasterize tool from the raster menu and I choose one for a fixed value to burn because I'm creating a boolean raster. I use georeference units of 30 by 30 meter cells and for the output extent I choose the DEM from PC raster. Note that you cannot save the file into the PC raster format directly, so I'm first going to create a GeoTIFF. Let's check the result. It's indeed a line, but then in raster format. And I can style it with palette at unique values, and there we see that it has a boolean true for the dam. Now we can also convert this layer to the PC raster format for further analysis. So as the input I choose the dam. It's a boolean data type as we have seen and I choose the file name dam PC raster. When I run it, it creates a copy in the PC raster format. I can uh, copy the style and here I see the result is the same as our GeoTIFF. Let's remove the GeoTIFF to avoid confusions. So we need to calculate the uh, flow accumulation to find later the maximum flow accumulation which will define our uh, outlet. And in order to do that I need a flow direction raster and I need a material raster. So I use LDD create to create the flow direction raster. As an input I choose the DEM and I call it flow direction. Keep all the defaults. When I zoom to the layer I can there see the flow directions and if I move the dam on top of it I can see where it is. And I need a material layer. If I set it to material for each pixel of one unit, output data type scalar, 
then it will accumulate the amount of cells, which is uh, sufficient for our application. So this generates a raster, which for, has for each pixel value 1. So now I can go back to the Accuflux tool. And for LDD layer, I choose flow direction for material, the material layer. And then I can save the result as a flow accumulation. Now it shows for each pixel the amount of upstream pixels that accumulate at that pixel. And because the values are quite extreme, I'm going to use single gun pseudo color and I choose blues. I have this little bug in this uh, version on this computer, so I use CPT City. I saw that in 328, uh, I don't have that problem. Here I go to cumulative count to deal with the extreme uh, values, and there you can see where the flow accumulation uh, high values cross the dam line. And our purpose now is to find on that line the maximum value flow accumulation, and that will be our outlet. For that purpose, we can use the area operations, which are zonal operations. Our class raster is the dam line, which is uh, true for the dam. And we use flow accumulation as the scalar input raster. And that will give us the maximum flow accumulation value for the line. Let's move it to the top and check the values, use palleted unique values, and there I find that 12,416 pixels are the maximum flow accumulation on the line. But now each pixel on the line has that value, so I need to use a comparison operator, where I say that when the flow accumulation equals the maximum value, then create a boolean which has the outlet pixel of our catchment that we are looking for. So here we see the maximum outlet pixel. And I can also style that with palleted unique values. It's boolean with true for our outlet and zero for the other pixels. Here you can see that. So it's at the corner of our dam line, but that doesn't matter. It's a model that we are uh, building here. So if I now go to the catchment tool, I can delineate the upstream area based on the flow direction and this outlet layer. I'll call it catchment. I run it. We zoom to the layer and this is the contributing area. And we see that even beyond our dam, there are a few pixels contributing to the area. Um, that has to do with uh, inaccuracies uh, in the process and in the DEM and maybe also in the dam line. So I polygonize this raster because I would like to have the boundary as a polygon. And there's the result. Let's uh, remove the areas that are not part of the catchment, so the zeros. Save the vector layer. And let's uh, change also the styling to a simple outline. Give it a red color, make it a bit thicker. And uh, let's remove some layers below. So we can see the result on the OpenStreetMap. So this is the area that contributes to the reservoir lake. So all the water that falls in that area will uh, drain towards the dam line. If you need to do this more often, you can create a graphical model or a processing tool. I hope this was useful. Please subscribe if you want to get updates on new videos.